I want to talk about what Dennis Dodd had written about Oklahoma in this upcoming 2020 season. And one of the things that struck me was just how optimistic he is about this 2020 season. He goes on his column to say, Oklahoma absolutely deserves a top four spot because aside from Clemson, there's nobody else in the country who has a better chance to go undefeated in the regular season. And that's what's going to take, pro what it's probably going to take for Oklahoma to get to the playoff. So I'm not saying they can get there. They just got the schedule to do it. With that defensive performance last year against LSU, they've lost credibility with the committee. They actually got better defensively, significantly better defensively, but fell victim to LSU as a lot of people did. But they've got to win all their games. I think they can win all their games, but Oklahoma is absolutely a top four team. Goes on. The 2020 season marks Lincoln Riley's fourth on the sidelines since replacing Bob Stoops. But it also is a pivotal year in which he finally gets the opportunity to try out the guy that he handpicked at quarterback. Baker Mayfield was there when he got there. He sort of handpicked Kyler Murray, if you want to make that argument, because when Murray decided that he was going to transfer and word got back to Riley, Riley said, make it happen and sign your financial aid agreement. And then there was some stipulations that put in place about playing baseball and football. And he asked him, hey, give me one season of football and, and, we'll, and then do what you're going to do. Because at the time, we all believed that Murray's future lies in baseball. <laughs> Good that he picked football because the Oakland Athletics decided they're not paying their minor leaguers this year. So there was a sound business decision. But getting back to that position, Rattler commits. Rattler is a big part of that program even as Tanner Mordecai was kind of also thought about at the time, the guy that he wanted, right, Cameron Rising, decided to flip his commitment to Texas, and he ends up at Utah. So Mordecai's just kind of there. He wants to come to Oklahoma, and he does. So now we have what we believe, you know, I say what we believe in air quotes, is going to be a quarterback battle between Mordecai and Rattler. And putting aside... If Mordecai can beat out Rattler, I think most people's prognostications, our predictions, our forecasting is based on this idea that Rattler is the starting quarterback. I don't think that many people feel the same way about Oklahoma having an opportunity to win all their games to Tanner Mordecai's quarterback. Just don't. Now, people close to the program might feel a little bit differently. I myself, I even have doubts about whether or not Oklahoma can go undefeated to get to the college football playoff. Why? Because Oklahoma hasn't gone undefeated in the regular season since 2004. And we got to go back like 10 years for the last time that Oklahoma made it through the month of October. Unscathed. And you're asking a lot. And yeah, they got beat down against LSU, but they got exposed against Kansas State, right? And then Iowa State, Further exposed Oklahoma's defense in Norman at Games and Ames this year. And it ought to be Matt Campbell's best team with Brees Hall on the backfield, with Brock Purdy at quarterback, and with John Haycock's three safety drop eight defense giving everybody fits. To say nothing of, I'm bullish on Texas Christian because Zach Evans is carrying the rock and Gary Patterson is still calling the defense. Matt Duggan's a gamer. Right? That dude has enough moxie to be considered on the same physical stand from the physical standpoint of a Sam Ellinger. Meanwhile, that team is gonna be the most talented that they have been probably since 2009. I'm gonna say that again. Texas is the most talented that they have been in a decade. And the last time they were this talented, they played for a national championship. This is not the year for Oklahoma to play with anybody. This is exactly the year for which you need to take everybody seriously. Matt Wells is coming back with Alan Bowman. They have an identity now, right? They have an offensive identity. They have a defensive identity. Keith Patterson is coming up here to secure commitments from kids that Philip Montgomery should be securing commitments from. Ah! But they're going to come and they're going to have, they're, they're going to be blazed out and ready to go. Because that game's in Lubbock. 
right? We have the Kansas Jayhawks are coming on with what they believe is a good year, but I, I'm betting on Brent Deerman if I'm betting on anybody at Kansas, all right? Because that offense that he was running, when it was run well, was putting up points. And Puka Williams Jr. might be the most underrated tailback in college football today outside of perhaps Kennedy Brooks, right? Oklahoma State feels real good about being Oklahoma State right now. Spencer Sanders, turnover machine, but he's their guy. Chuba Hubbard's coming off of 2,094 yards rushing. Tyler Wallace has been one of the best wide receivers in the country for the past two years. And their defense is better than I thought it would be with Malcolm Rodriguez, I believe, going to have just a breakout year. To say nothing of what Trace Ford might end up being. Now, add into all of that Chris Kleiman in Kansas State and what Elon's going to do. Because Courtney Messingham is back, and Leah, I think losing Scotty Hazleton is not going to help them. But they elevate it from within. And Kleiman has shown he knows how to win. Because in a year in which nobody expected that man to do much of anything, I said... Kansas State's going to win seven games, and nobody's going to know what to do with them. Didn't know that they beat Oklahoma, put 48 points up on them. But that football program and that football team and that head coach finds a way. That's the scariest game in this conference for me right now. Because they will find a way to stay in a fight, and at the end, have themselves positioned to win the thing. Which is exactly what happened against Oklahoma State. With Skyler friggin' Thompson at quarterback. Alright? They're running fake guard counters. Like, they're, they're playing on an elite level of chess in their scheming. Okay? They're saying, cool, you want to be athletic and fast? We'll use that against you. We'll do this Steven Seagal stuff for you. We can do that. It's fine. We can use ninjutsu. I'm saying that there's not an easy win in this conference outside of West Virginia right now. Alright? And Neil Brown... Probably gets together at some point, just not in 2020, right? Just not in 2020. And if you're going down this conference and you're going, where is my easy W? And you're looking at Oklahoma, your easy W is in Morgantown this year. You got to go to Morgantown. That's not an easy trip. Sure, it's not going to be an easy trip in the age of the virus. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, on the other hand, you you get Oklahoma State at home, but the last time you got Oklahoma State at home, Corn Dog need to underthrow a pass for you to stave off getting beat. Not unlike Iowa State last year, where if Brock Purdy had thrown to the other tight end and not the tight end that was double covered, maybe you get beat there too. You no, know, Texas Christian was in a, a bridge year for a quarterback that was a true freshman. Yeah, you got to replace Jalen Rager, but you got to figure that out. And anyway, and everybody knew that was coming. But everybody gets tight when you're playing Texas Christian. You know, and watching Max Duggan run for 60 yards was not a good look. Watching Jalen Hurts struggle against Texas Christian was not a good look. And, uh, I mean, Baylor, ugh, as much as I want to write Baylor off, if they get good quarterback play, they're going to be okay. Because Dave Aranda knows how to call a defense, coach defense. And Larry Fedora knows, if anything else, he's got 30,000 permutations of plays to look back on. And he's logged every single one of them. So he's going to know what your tendencies are. A la Ed Henry and remember the Titans. Okay? He's going to know. And you're going to have to find a way to stop the man. I just don't see easy wins. I'm not ready to say that Oklahoma can go undefeated in the regular season. But that's probably because I pay closer attention to it than Dennis Dodd does. And that's not shade. That's just what it is. You know? That's just, I care about the teams here a little bit more than I care about the teams everywhere else. His job is to care about all the teams.